Hi everyone, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can quickly customize the layout of your tools in Affinity Designer for desktop. I'll also show you how to create a preset so you can have different layouts depending on what you're working on. Now, in addition to Designer, you can also customize your tools in the desktop versions of Photo and Publisher, but this does not work in the iPad version of the suite. Are you ready? Let's get started. Now for this tutorial, I'm specifically referring to the set of tools on the side here, not the contextual toolbar at the very top. So I wanna make sure that I'm selecting the right options and they can be found in the view menu at the very bottom here. Standardly, these tools are docked, but I can undock them and move the toolbar anywhere I want on the canvas. While I can't resize it, I can place it anywhere I need it. To redock it, I'll just go up to the top again to view and choose dock tools. I can also show and hide the tools the same way. So I'm going to click to turn it off and then I can go back up to view and click to turn it on. And then finally, you can customize the actual layout of the tools by going to view and customize tools. And this is what we're going to focus on for the rest of the tutorial. The first thing I want to do is reset my toolbar back to the standard out of the box layout that you would see when you first open Designer. So I'll change the number of columns to one and hit reset. Now it's important to note that only hitting reset is not going to bring the tools back to the standard single column. You need to manually adjust that. You can customize the tools by dragging them on or dragging them off the toolbar. You can change the order simply by dragging them around. And I do wanna point out this last little icon here is a divider. So if you want to set yours up to group by type, you can do that, which is something I do myself. So I'm going to reorganize mine starting from the top down. Now, in addition to organizing my tools by type, I also like to break apart groups where I know that I use the individual tools a great deal. And for me, it's faster to be able to select them separately. So for example, the gradient tool here has a little carrot, which means it's a group. So the gradient tool and the transparency tool are in that one tool but you can see that they're over here individually as well. I'm actually going to pull this one off and place the two individual ones once I group everything up. So the very first thing I'm going to do is change my number of columns to two. Remember, that's a manual process. And I'm going to leave my move tool here where it's at and move my node tool up. I want to group all of my node tools together. So I'm going to bring my contour tool there, my corner tool up. I think I'll bring my width tool and my knife tool and then place a divider underneath those. And I'll bring my artboard tool down here for right now. So I'm going to speed this up and once I'm finished, I'll come back and show you how to save a preset. Okay, I've changed the order of my tools. And one thing I want to point out is that when it comes to these shapes here, I did actually leave the group in place because there are a lot of tools within that that I use, but not very frequently. And what I did was pull out some of the individual shapes that I use more often for my floral illustrations or things like these vintage book plates. So that allows me to quick grab those, but I can always go back in here for the ones that I don't use as frequently. So now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and hit close and I want to save this as a preset. So on the desktop version, you're able to save a preset once your interface is set up the way that you'd like. Now I want to note, it doesn't just include these tools, it also includes the studios as well. You can set up a single preset or set up a different layout for the various tasks that you might be performing in Designer or the other Affinity apps. So for example, if I go up to window here and down to studio, you can see that I have two set up. One is my standard layout, which is the one that you're looking at. And then one is for when I'm creating patterns. It's a more minimalist one where I've pulled out a lot of the studios and moved the tools around a little bit. So when you want to save a preset, you'll go to window, studio, and choose add preset name your preset and click OK. Now I've already done that, so I'm going to go back up to window here, down to studio, and you can see that my two are right here. When you want to change or load the preset, just choose from this list. So I'm going to load pattern creation, and you can see that it's changed the studios I have in place and the tools have shifted slightly. If I want to go back to my standard layout, I'll do the same thing. So window, down to studio, and I'll pick Tracy standard, and I'm all set. Now, one thing I do want to note is that the preset is going to save the tool layout, but it's not going to save the number of columns. Remember, that's manual. So if I were to go into view, customize tools and change this to one and hit close, the layout that I created is still there, but obviously it's a single column. 
if I wanted to go up to window and studio and click on say Tracy standard, it's not changing anything. It's not going to bring it back to two columns. To do that, I need to go back into view and then go down to customize tools and change number to two. So can you see yourself customizing your layout? And if you did, would you create one layout for everything or set up different presets for different types of projects? Let me know below. And if you have any questions or even a suggestion for a tutorial, let me know that as well. If you like my teaching style, I have full length classes on both Skillshare and my own learning site, The Creator Collage. I've linked to both below. I have lots more affinity tutorials coming up here on my channel, so stay tuned. In the meantime, you might wanna check out one of these two next. Thanks for watching.